this video we'll do a few things. <coughs> we'll get familiar with the people who work in the vineyard. When we listen to the conversation, we also get an idea um, of the selection of grammar aspects that uh, we're going to deal with. Um, let's first have a look at the vineyard where the people we're going to listen to are now. Uh, see a typical Mediterranean vineyard. It could be a Spanish or a Portuguese one, or even an Argentinian, or um, um, a Californian or a South African one, um, um, vineyard. Uh, we'll see more about these uh, soils later. Um, in this video, we're going to listen to the people working um, at the vineyard. Uh, you can find uh, this audio uh, in the course platform. Uh, let me show you a bit how it sounds. Liz, meet my friend Robert Poker. Robert, this is Liz, my colleague. She takes care of soil analysis and irrigation systems. Hi Liz, nice meeting you. Hi Robert, nice meeting you too. I'll show you the place. What is special about our vineyards is that we have different types of soil here where we grow different types of grapes. Really? That's interesting. Yes, we have different shades of red soils and even stony white soils. On top of that, we also have some volcanic soil areas. What a contrast. That's really amazing. This one, for example, is typical of Portugal. Well, that one is much more like south of France. And what do you have in the red soils? Well, we mostly grow Grenache here. We'll see how to, appro uh, how to approach uh, different grammar, grammar things in this course. Um, so, just a few things about the approach we take to grammar uh, here. Uh, we understand that communicating difficult or complex uh, ideas or sensory perceptions uh, is not an easy thing. But we use grammar to help us, because ideas are put into words in English in a prefixed way. Um, if we learn this basic word order, things will be easier. Uh, that is why uh, word order um, is for. Um, uh, word order in English is much more fixed than it is in other languages, such as Spanish, for example. On the other hand, sensory perceptions are communicating using things like adjectives and metaphors. What's uh, the basic word order in English? Uh, the thing is, that uh, if in Spanish we say hablo español, in French we say je parle, je parle español, and in English we say I speak English. The difference between Spanish and both French and English languages is that the Spanish verb phrase doesn't include a personal pronoun, probably because there's no need for it. In French this personal pronoun is je, and in English it is I. But in both languages, French and English, the subject must be included uh, in the sentence, whereas um, uh, in Spanish uh, there's no need for that. I in English we can tell who's saying what, um, and if we don't include the grammar subject uh, the center in the sentence, uh, um, mm, there's not an English sentence. Whereas in Spanish uh, there are different endings for uh, each verb person, depending on who's speaking. Um, that is, uh, in Spanish, the subject is marked by the final letters of the verb. But in English and in French, the subject must be part of the sentence, and we need this subject to be explicit at the beginning of the sentence. So, the basic word order of different parts of speech in English is S, V, I, I, O, and D, O. If we change that into S, V, D, O, or I, D, O, the result is that um, we emphasize the fact that it is to him and not to my cousin, for example, or my friend, the person I sold my grapes to. So there's a big difference between I sold him my best grapes, which is not a, a non-emphatic sentence, 
or I sold my best grapes to him, which is a little bit emphatic. Um, just very briefly, because I'm sure uh, that you all know this, and note that the S ending um, in the affirmative sentences, such as, for example, she plays football now, or in negative sentences, such as she doesn't play football anymore, or um, in the interrogative sentences, where the uh, word does uh, goes in front of the sentence, does she play football? Um, so, uh, it's just a brief review, I'm sure you all know that, but it's good to, to, to revise these things. In this module, uh, we've learned a few things. We have revised how to organize the different parts of the English affirmative sentences. Um, and uh, I've made a note of the position of uh, the different parts of the speech in an affirmative sentences. Um, for example, in the, uh, in the sentence, Anne plays football now. Um, Anne is the subject of the sentence. It goes first, and then the verb, and then the direct object. Note the change in the interrogative and negative versions of uh, the sentence. Uh, thus, thus uh, uh, Anne play football now uh, is the, the uh, interrogative uh, version. And um, let's have a look at the, f uh, the reference. Uh, the reference, again, um, are um, uh, the, the, the course book, uh, the language of wines, an English course, and the codification of meaning in English, which um, deals with uh, uh, the, the, uh, how to handle uh, emphasis, for example, in among many, many other things. And uh, this is all. Uh, thanks for watching.